Hi guys, welcome back to my amazing kitchen. And if you are new here, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right away and become part of the amazing family today. Also remember to turn on your notification bell so you would be the first to be notified anytime I upload a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I make my Hausa Koko without millet. Because when you live abroad, simple ingredients such as millet can be very hard to find. But nevertheless, we are still going to drink our Hausa Koko. So come along and let's get right into the video. And as always, all the ingredients will be listed in the box down below, but we will need some cloves, dried chilies, calabash nutmeg, some alligator peppers, which is foam wisa, I believe, some huintia, and some ginger. And we will also need some corn dough. To begin our cocoa, we are going to add all our spices into our blender and grind them. All the measurements are listed in the description box down below. Next, you want to add your fermented corn dough to your spices. And if you don't know how to make your fermented corn dough, you can check my previous video for how I make mine. This corn dough has a very smooth and fine texture, which is perfect for this cocoa recipe. Now add some water and blend until your spices are well broken down. You need just enough water to help your blender blend. We want our cocoa to be well infused with all the spices, so take your time and blend it really well. Once we are done blending, we are going to strain our cocoa mixture to separate the fiber or the chaff from our cocoa mixture. This step is very important if you want to have a very silky and smooth cocoa. I'm using a fine mesh strainer, so I only needed to strain it once. But if you are using a strainer with big holes, you might have to do it a couple of times. I just added some water to help extract all the mixture from the chaff. If you have a nut milk bag or a cheese cloth or a muslin cloth, you can use it in place of a strainer as well. Now you can discard the chaff and you are left with this beautiful creamy mixture and this is what we will need for our Hausa Kuku. I'm not going to use all of this mixture in one day so I'm going to pour it into an airtight container and keep it in my refrigerator for up to about two weeks and freeze the rest so that anytime I want some Hausa Kuku I can just grab it and make some. So to actually make the Hausa Koko, you would need a bit of your mixture and some water. Bring the water to a boil and add just a pinch of salt to it. Once the water comes to a boil, you are going to pour in your cocoa mixture gradually whilst you stir the water continuously to avoid lumps from forming. Add your cocoa mixture gradually until you get to the thickness you want. I don't like my cocoa very thick, so I want it a bit in between. Add more if you want it very thick and add less if you want it a bit runny. To better control the thickness of your cocoa, you want to start with a little bit of water as you can always add more but can't take out once it's already added. If you start with too much water and run out on your cocoa mixture, you are not going to be able to get the thickness that you want. As soon as your cocoa begins to boil, you can stop whisking and allow it to boil for about 2-3 to three minutes and your cocoa will be done. Now you can turn off your heat and serve your cocoa as you would. Now just look at this consistency. The cocoa is so silky and smooth, just the way a good cocoa should be like. Now tell me the truth, does this want to make you run to your kitchen and whip some up or what? Eh? <laughs> you can serve this cocoa with some sugar or honey or maple syrup, any sweetener that you prefer. And of course, I've got my roasted peanuts on the side just as we would do it in Ghana. 
And yes, I add evaporated milk to my cocoa. <laughs> and but on a more serious note, those of you who drink cocoa without milk, or yeah, come and gather here in the comment section. Let's have some discussion. Nami, I can't think far. Cocoa without milk, ah, that is a no, no, no in my kitchen. <laughs> but of course, everybody can eat their cocoa anyway and anyhow that they love it most. Even without millet, this cocoa is well spiced and tastes the same as Hausa cocoa. You need to try it to know what I'm talking about. If you use the right corn dough, the result is going to be perfect. I hope you try this for yourself and for your family. So until I come your way next time with another amazingly delicious recipe, cook this cocoa with love and see it radiate through the hearts of your family. Thank you so much for watching guys and see you in my next video. Bye.